What's up, y'all? Hope you're having a beautiful day. Sending some peace, love, and positivity to you. Welcome to the Bobby Keith Podcast, episode one. We here. We at the beginning, man. It's taking a while to get here. It's taking a lot of learning, a lot of personal growth. But hey, man, we are here, and this is what we're doing. Podcasting is a beautiful form of art. And I just, before we even get into anything, I want to thank those who have kind of laid a path for someone like myself or someone who just wants to do this, man, or anybody, period, or just everybody who's provided joy throughout the podcasting universe, you know what I mean, to allow people to just sit down and either relax and laugh or maybe expand your consciousness or just get some information. So I just want to thank all the podcasters. I'm going to list off a few that have inspired me and helped me get through life these past years. I can't even put a number on how many years, but so we just going to show some love, you know. Of course, we got Joe Budden Podcast. We got Joe Rogan. We got Road Tripping, man, the basketball podcast. Like, I love that genre. I love listening to players break down the game at such a high level. So you got road tripping. Of course, you got all the smoke, knuckleheads, JJ Reddick. There's a, there's a lot. I definitely love all those podcasts. Shout out to y'all for bringing the actual knowledge of the game and allowing us to hear those perspectives. I want to thank y'all. Um, of course, Tack Stone waste of time with this the real um Hannibal Burris Handsome Rambler great podcast man uh the Arian Foster podcast I definitely enjoyed that I'm just scrolling through podcasts I've downloaded in the past you know what I mean uh Vince Carter you know the NBA podcast man the Theo Vaughn uh podcast this past weekend uh Bodega Boys man Aubrey Marcus, what a what a uh, intellectual, uh, enlightening, conscious, expanding podcast, along with uh, Family Hour, Duncan Trussell, Duncan Trussell's Family Hour, man, I love that podcast, man. This is just going to be some, <laughs> this is just recommendations at this point, man, Foamy and Buckets, love y'all, man, keep it light, keep it, keep it, uh, that good, that good jokes, the good, that good positive energy, man. Um, T.I., Andrew Santino, Bill Simmons, uh, Tom Segura. You know, we could do this, Burt Kreischer. Uh, we could do this all day, man. I just, the you made it weird with Pete Holmes, man. Uh, no Jumper. We we could do this all day, man. I just I just wanted to uh to give some love and some credit to the podcast that came before me before I go really deep into this journey. So what I want to get into, I want to get into a few things today. Routine and deep clean. <laughs> That's what I want to title this one. Routine, man. As I've gotten older, right, I mean, I'm only 25, but I've definitely noticed routine and how important that is and becoming aware of your own habits, <laughs> your own routine, your own habituality, if that's the uh, way to say it. Um, creating healthy habits. This is just... Beautiful, beautiful for life, man. I wanted to talk about, uh, I've been doing this thing. I mean, I've been drinking over a gallon of water for over four years now, but I'm doing this thing recently um, where I drink a half gallon before I do anything in the morning. You know, I wake up, fill that half gallon up, and I drink that. That's the first thing I'm doing. Before I do any caffeine, any coffee. I mean, right now I'm on that caffeine, man. I had a coffee 
And um, man, coffee is amazing. It's relatively new in my life. I'd say the last uh, the last two years. I really dove deep into coffee. I don't even know if I'd ever tasted it before. About two years ago, besides, you know, you know how you just have a, a little sip of your parents' coffee growing up. Just like, what is that? Can I tr- can I try that? You taste it, and it's the worst thing you've ever had in your life because your parents drank black coffee. <laughs> that you didn't even know what sugar and coffee tasted like. You didn't even know what a little what a little almond milk would do. You know what I mean? You had no idea. Um, at least that was my experience growing up. <laughs> so I always had this weird, this weird uh, viewpoint of coffee that it was disgusting, and there was no way it would be good. Um, I understood caffeine, right? Because I was definitely a uh, a soda addict, and uh, you know a lot of those sodas actually have a lot of caffeine in it too. So it's the uh, the double dose the double deadly dose of, uh, what am I trying to say, of that that altered consciousness, right? Because you get that heavy dose of sugar, that'll change your consciousness. I mean, you see it with children. Their whole world changes, you get a little sugar in them. It's different, man. And then you top that with some uh, caffeine. Man, that'll get you addicted real quick getting that out of my life man that was pretty crazy that was a pretty difficult thing to do but um still working to, with it to this day because even switching my whole lifestyle getting rid of uh sodas and um that uh that that terribly processed type of food and animal products and I mean, this is all this is all me. I'm just telling you about my life. I don't really, I don't know. I don't know if I suggest doing what I did. I just jumped off the deep end with the, uh, veganism and water, and it changed my life and made my life great. But I don't know if your body is built like that to even follow anything like this. But yeah, getting that sugar. I'm still dealing with the sugar thing, man. Like, actually, this uh, this past week or so. I decided that I was going to try to do like a month or something like that without a uh, that processed sugar, the uh, the additional sugar like uh like I'm still really cool with uh like fruits and um like fruit juice type situations um like a kombucha is what I mean when I say a fruit juice uh I'm not going to give up my kombucha (laughs) because, I mean, the sugar is feeding that that scoby, that mother scoby, you know what I mean? uh, It's a part of the journey. How are you going to get kombucha without the sugar? But you know what I'm trying to say, y'all. I'm I'm getting rid of the cakes, the the cookies, the uh, that temptation. Um, Working working away from that and just seeing how it affects my body. And my well-being and my spirit. I actually, the, the vision came to me, man, in a meditation or woman, whoever is indulging in this audio bliss. <laughs> it came to me in a meditation. I was doing an outside meditation. I typically do. Um, you know, when you're looking out, you're gazing towards your third eye, trying to look through it to get that marvelous visions. The the kaleidoscope life that uh that potent information from the universe or the universe of the universe if you follow um you know absol said <laughs> why would i attend university when the whole universe is just a city to me um that's that's what i'm talking about <laughs> but yeah what was i talking about that uh that meditation. So yeah, it came through saying, "Hey, I know what you're trying to access, but you're just going a little heavy on that processed sugar, man. That calcification, that's a real thing." And that kind of taught me it was a a real a real thing. Um 
because you know you hear it when you're on like a spiritual path or a health or anything like that you'll hear um that the sugars they'll calcify your pineal gland man you won't be able to access this you hear it you hear it so you do it but you don't really you don't really know uh you don't have that scientific method and i just had it right there in this past week been getting back to normalcy you know um had a beautiful meditation yesterday things are looking up man so yeah but was a, the main thing i was getting from coffee coffee so yeah, the, I mean, I never was really going with the uh, with additional sugar in the coffee, but I had just started getting into that recently. You know, uh, you get a latte and you get that get a vanilla flavor in the latte, and it just elevates the whole thing. It's so good. <laughs> so I've been having just regular iced coffee, a little oat milk. I know there's sugar in the oat milk, but it's not added sugar. It's the sugars of the oat. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get at. Just remove that that additional sugar. I was, I was getting heavy into the, the yerba mate cans. You know, you know those the yellow can, the organic yerba mate, delicious drink. It's so good. But that second ingredient. After that filtered water, that's that cane sugar, man. Uh, drinking one of those, having a, a coffee, and that's got sugar in it, that's got sugar in it. Then you keep going throughout your day. You're pretty healthy. I'm always pretty healthy all day. And then at that nighttime, man, I'm, I'm going to snack on a piece of cake or something, and that just that's what it is. That's the that's the extra sugar, and we we just we know how dangerous sugar is at this point. We all know it. This is all. It's a conscious choice if we choose to indulge in it or not. And I just I needed to prove to myself that I could just get rid of it in that additional form for some some amount of time. And I'm just kind of studying what it does and if I grow or if. Not in uh not in height or anything like that, but just spiritually and as a person. But yeah, these addictions they're pretty crazy. Um, like caffeine. I love caffeine. And this was like I said, this was not something uh that I was really daily doing up until a couple years ago with the coffee. It was actually, so there was a point of time when I broke away from that soda thing. Um, there was a point of time where I was probably uh, no caffeine at all, or it would come in weird ways, like maybe a can of kombucha, it's got like, or a bottle, it's got like, I don't know, like 10, 10 milligrams or whatever of caffeine. And, you know, your coffee, your yerba mates are ringing in a lot higher than that in the above 100 area. Um, so there was a point of time where I was without caffeine and I was really clear, man. I was really, really clear. Um, I didn't even have the same type of self betterment focused routines in my life. Uh, there's that word routine. That's what I was getting at. Um, I didn't even have those in my life. And I was really clear and really, really good um, for the most part. I mean, I can only imagine what that would look like with these healthy routines I've introduced. And uh, so, yeah, speaking on that, so we talked on the meditation. And I know everybody knows about meditation. I know we've all tried it. We've all on a couple days or we do it when we feel we need it but doing it every single day it's just, it's it's beautiful like I was able to sit there empty-minded for a second you know what I mean just capturing these moments 
paired that with yoga. I mean, I'm like over five months on this routine with meditation and yoga and probably make a YouTube video. I don't know if I'll do one at the half year mark. I don't know. I can't really confirm or deny any of that, but I'll tell you right now that I've seen great benefits in just mental clarity and understanding what to do. Understanding I need to start this podcast, man. I want to talk uh, that uh, that Theo Vaughn podcast. It, I, it just came across my uh, my podcast ting. I don't even, I don't even know what type of uh, words I'm trying to say. It just came across my radar this past couple weeks, and it's really inspired me to just do it. I don't know what I'm wait. I don't know what I was waiting for. You know, you're waiting for me personally. I never was even really indulging in the solo podcast. I mean, if you listen to all the people, all the podcasts I listed off at the beginning, it's mostly uh, there's always some sort of guest or the podcast itself is a group. You know, Joe Budden podcast. That's four people plus other people, interviewers who come in. I mean, I generally stray towards that type of atmosphere, like an interview atmosphere. Um, I mean, with Joe Rogan, right? You always have a guest. It'd be interesting to hear that go solo, but um, yeah, I love a guest. I guess the only person that I would actually tune in, I mean, Duncan Trussell usually has a guest, but he'll go off just on his own for time to time. And, you know, I guess that helped in me make this decision. But yeah, I want to say uh, Theo Vaughn, that podcast has inspired me to just sit down and do it. And the flexibility, because do it solo, who will have a guest, like just that type of flexibility. I never, I guess I didn't comprehend that it was a possibility until just recently. So, yeah, shout out to um, that podcast, Theo, and uh, was it this past weekend. Shout out to that. And <laughs> I'm trying to break the imposter syndrome because that's the only thing that's been in my ears for the past week or so besides Joe Budden. Uh, so I don't miss those. That's like, that's religion. And that's, that's that independent creator fight that... Man, these past, uh, I'm recording this in mid-September. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hazy Monday afternoon. It's nice out. It's like 70. You know, I got a long sleeve on and I got some shorts on. It's that type of weather. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But uh, the Joe Budden podcast is about to leave Spotify after obtaining the information about the value that they have in the market. And man, I was saying this, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I put it on my story when the Rogan deal came out. Cause like you see the Bill Simmons get the Spotify deal. Well, not Bill Simmons, it was the ringer. Um, I don't know if his stuff's exclusive. I don't really know what, uh, what that deal entitles, but, um, I know he has some sort of partnership. I think they might own the Ringer, but he's still on Apple. I don't. I don't listen to the other uh, podcasts in the network besides Bill Simmons talk about basketball. So I enjoy that. I enjoy that from time to time. You know, I love basketball. But yeah, when Rogan got the deal, I'm like, hmm, this stuff wasn't happening, man. This was. This is all because of Joe Budden podcast. This is. I'm not saying. Uh, and Joe wouldn't even say, uh, Budden wouldn't even say that they need that three hundred million. If you listen to these recent episodes, but they're they use them, they use them, man, they use them. Spotify played that dirty game. They used them. They saw that the model worked, then they wanted to own their whole thing, man. And we creators, we don't, we don't want 
to be owned. That's why we're creating. That's what we're doing. Man, I, I, I had opportunities to go work for these companies and make these other people money. And I mean, of course I still do. I still got to pay the bills, uh, but not in the same capacity as it would be. Um, like I, I can't do the direct manager thing anymore. I could, I, I ended that uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, and now just to make money, I use uh, DoorDash, I drive, I deliver food, you know what I mean? And can do whatever I want. I'm listening to podcasts, I'm listening to music. The other day I ran through the blueprint one, two, curse and the gift. And I didn't get to three yet, but just having that freedom to do whatever you want and create your own schedule. I'm still working for a corporation, but it feels like I'm working for an algorithm. And I'm used to that. I'm used to that because that's YouTube. That's uh, that's all that is. It's an algorithm. For some reason, something will hit and the algorithm will poke you to more people's feeds. And I just can't do that manager thing anymore. And an algorithm as a manager isn't that weird to me because I have history in uh, computer science and that type of uh, engineering with the computer and controlling. I mean, I've taken a class called algorithms, you know what I mean? Uh, I feel as though I could control it if I wanted to. Um, like I've seen supercomputers. We like, I, I know what it is. This is not like, uh, the tech stuff is not magic to me. It is controllable. So, I get it. I guess I'm just trying to say uh, <laughs> I, I really I'm glued to the uh, what's going on over there with the Joe Budden podcast and I know the market value. Um, so yeah, the day that I tie, try to tie it back, I'm trying to follow this thread in my mind, you know what I mean? Uh, this indigo thread <laughs> and uh, trying to tie that back. So yeah, when Rogan got the deal, I'm like, man, this was not happening without Joe Budden. I did not have the Spotify app. I didn't even have it. I don't stream. I need hard copies. The only thing I stream is podcasts, right? But I'm still downloading them. I download them. I don't stream them. I download them. So I could turn off my, uh, I could turn off my data and Wi-Fi and still listen to this. I don't like the idea of, well, if there's no service or, or whatever, um, you, you don't have music or you don't have podcasts or whatever. I think I, I just might've been born in the right year, man. I'm 95 baby. Right. So there was a couple years there where of my childhood and developmental years where the internet wasn't what it is right now. This is this is a uh, this is different. We didn't have internet on the phone. That came later. That was in high school, man, when there was legit internet and social media like you remember each social media hitting like I don't know, just kind of knowing that and I've always been a physical copy guy. Like I have CDs and after that, I would always, well, you kind of had to buy the album digitally, but even at, like once streaming came in, if Flappa Zombies are dropping something, I'm gonna buy the hard copy. It'll come with the digital download and I'll have that file on my computer. And then I have the backup on the hard drive. Like, I don't know, I've just been that type of guy. So I didn't even have a Spotify app. And then Joe Budden podcast, they got to go to Spotify. They don't have to. They chose to go to Spotify to obtain that data of what it would be like to be with an exclusive streamer. That didn't exist. That did not exist at all. Then you see all the new stuff coming the next year. Uh, Hannibal Burris and uh, Arian Foster, they got taken away f uh, from the podcast feed. They went with Luminary. So I, I haven't heard their podcast 
since that. Because after that free trial's up, I mean, I'm not paying for subscription services like that, man. Not not at this moment. I need more capital to justify that type of thing. Um, so yeah, like someone like me, I had, I didn't have the Spotify app. Um, I downloaded the app just to listen to the Joe Budden podcast. <laughs> So they proved that whole model and market with them. And it's just, it's just been really interesting to see. Um, to see that that battle for creatives. And I'm, I'm just indebted to the beautiful work that they're doing over there at the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like showing creators what's behind the wall. <laughs> like what 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 is behind the wall man and that's what they're doing um i'm sure there's youtubers out there like it too i mean i know i've looked at those videos of uh how that their algorithms and how their pay their pay model and all that stuff um i mean i'm currently currently uh i'm coming up on two years on the platform of youtube i've put up like over 60 videos i think less than 70 um and yeah dealing with that algorithm seeing for some reason my doordash videos they go nuts um and just understanding that the algorithm what you like it, it'd be easy for me to only make those videos but they're just not a they're not enriching they're they're pretty easy it's like the uh if we compare it to the music world, it's like, it's that formulaic single. Um, I guess the formula keeps changing as streaming takes hand. You know, now it's like a two and a half minute uh, chorus verse. Cor- you know you, you know what I'm trying to say, but uh, man, I don't even know where I came from on this one. Uh, I, lo- I lost the, the indigo thread here. <laughs> But I know the main things I want to talk about today is routine and deep clean. So yeah, man, develop develop some healthy routines. Develop them, man. Try to better yourself. Man, I gotta start saying man and woman or <laughs> or human. That'd be that'd be pretty fly, right? Like you gotta develop some routines, human. <laughs> I don't know. I might try that. I might try that. <laughs> what's up to all my humans out there what's up to all my aliens what's going on <laughs> how you living today damn um deep clean so this past weekend my fiance and i talia uh love you talia if you're listening <laughs> i love all y'all too but that's my fiance you know it hit different <laughs> shout out to scissor that just dropped if you're listening to this in a time capsule. Go check out that hit different. Scissor and Ty Dolla Sign. Hit different. Hit different. Hit different. Hit. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> One day I'll bless y'all with the vocal cords. <laughs> For now you get the, the talking version. But yeah, deep clean. You know, we, we did a deep clean of the place that we live at. And just feels really good. Go go deep clean something. Clean your phone. Do clean your your living space. Um where you lay your head down to sleep. Clean that area. Feels good, man. Feels really good. I mean, this room where I'm recording right now, I I, I did a a deep clean in here, a, a rearranging. A, you know, I had the desk that I work off this, uh, I had one of those, excuse me, I don't know if that bird picked up, but yeah, I had one of those, uh, I got another one, excuse me. I had one of those, uh, just paper stack situations, you know what I'm talking about? Like on each side of the desk, on either side of the laptop, I just had papers stacked up, 
just uh just balancing like a, a halftime performer with uh with plates and spinning bowls on sticks and on a unicycle even uh and that that even I know I picked that up recently from uh the Theo Vaughn this is that imposter syndrome you're witnessing it in real time um and stepping back and seeing my body do it it's crazy but yeah you know the halftime shows where uh and I think I think I really like that podcast because I have a similar uh I have a similar I won't say cadence but thought thought uh thought road maybe road would trail trail for the what did Jay-Z say he said uh he could have gone left or right but he went straight <laughs> choosing your own path uh choose your own adventure those books were crazy what was I talking about oh the uh the halftime performance you've seen uh you ever have league pass and uh at halftime the local performance will just be on the television um, cause you know, if you watch a game on like regular television or a regular network, there'll be a halftime show. Say it's on TNT. You'll see inside the NBA, the, maybe the greatest show on television, um, sport related at least. Um, you'll see them talk and it, you, <laughs> you, you know what, you know what it is. A normal halftime show is what I'm trying to say. Um, if you have league pass or maybe you're at a game. There'll be a halftime performance to keep the crowd uh, intrigued. Uh, maybe they don't have to go to the bathroom. Maybe they they got their popcorn and um, they're just sitting there. You're just gonna have to sit there for 20 minutes. Uh, that'd be it's like an intermission, I guess. Uh, I've been to a few. Uh, what would you call that? Theater, theatric performances. Uh, musical theater <laughs> there's an intermission this is something i did not grow up with so talia's taken me to numerous amount of shows and there's this there's this this intermission this 20 minutes of uh you just sit there and the the story is just kind of hanging there it's in suspense very similar to a game um very similar to like a basketball game. It's like a halftime, um, an intermission. It's just some people leave, some people are staying. Um, there's a spotlight on the the stage or the court for basketball. But so sometimes on these basketball uh, games where you're there, you're watching it on MD. MTV, not MTV, but uh, NBA TV League Pass, uh, you'll see the local feed. <laughs> the feed of what's going on in the arena. And <laughs> for some reason, 90, I want to say 92% of the time, there's a a man on a, sometimes a woman on a, unis a human, there's a human on a, on a unicycle or maybe on a, uh, a balancing beam they're they're up on the air they're not on the floor and they're spinning a plate on their finger maybe a basketball or maybe a bowling ball even um and then on top of that they'll have like a rod and then on top of that more plates and bowls and uh maybe utensils and it's just odd um I'm not even sure where how I got there. But yeah, we cleaned the apartment. And it just feels really good. You get that clean, that good energy is just kind of conducive to having a clean environment. Like I know when I cleaned this room and the desk, the desk, that's how we got there. Yeah, I had uh had like a uh, a book and then on top of that was like a case for a uh a phone stabilizing tri not a tripod but like a, a monopod that was also a stabilizer um the case for that like a uh, a styrofoam type deal and then on top of that was maybe a bunch of 
like uh, pieces of mail and bills and such that I've paid. And on top of that, maybe a uh, maybe a uh, what was it? Something like maybe health records. Um, I don't know. It was just it was a lot of stuff and got a filing cabinet and we didn't get to the file part yet, but we each got our own drawer and we put all of our loose stuff in the drawer and, you know, file in the cabinet. That's a whole nother, <laughs> man, that's a whole nother beast. But, well, it would be like uh, cleaning the areas that are not visual. So like cabinets and closets and I mean, definitely clean all that stuff too. It'll be great, but that's not, we kind of did a, uh, what you can see deep clean and yeah, it, it, it feels great. You know, you reorganize something a little bit. Like I turned a, uh, a, uh, like a, like a side table. Um, I turned it a different way and it changed the whole room and the layout and cleaned off the desk and just made some things look nice you know it just feels good it just feels good you got to do a deep clean and when you do it with your car that's a that's just a beautiful thing um you know you come in uh you come in your car and you personally I, I i do a lot of like little hikes and stuff so i got dirty dirty shoes dirty feet um and that just all collects, that all collects in that, that area where your feet go in the driver's seat, you know, um, the floor. And when you get to the, the vacuum cleaner and you just clean it out, it just feels so good. And sometimes I'll get the, uh, the wipes that they sell at the, uh, at the car, the car cleaning place and, um, I get the wipe and I clean the, the steering wheel and the the dashboard and then the car just feels brand new you f I, I just feel like i could uh i could drive to like arizona or something um and just be comfortable you know because clean car i don't get a lot of car washes though um i've been meaning to get one recently i feel like there's a uh there's a direct correspondence um Uh, I can't pull the word I'm thinking of a uh, some sort of uh, educational word, um, mathematical, scientific maybe um, word describing like a uh, a linear uh, comparison, direct uh, correspondence. That might have been the word. Correspondence is a pretty that's a pretty legit word, but there's a I feel like there's a direct correspondence between car washes and uh, amount of disposable income. Um, I just, I, I think that's, that's gotta be a direct correspondence. Um, Cause I mean, I could afford a car wash, you know, I can drop that 10, um, but do I want to? Wouldn't I rather use that $10 on a, maybe a vegan euro from the the euro spot in Manchester um that's it's it's good stuff and it's a good question would i rather spend that 10 on uh the vacuum the wipe that's only $2 and then i have $8 i have a clean inside of the car spotless and then um then i have $8 to spare but if I wanted to clean the outside and inside, that's $12. And if I only had $10, then, then I'm, uh, then I'm in debt to my car cleaning, uh, budget. I don't know. You, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't get a lot of outside the car washes. I've probably had, a maybe, uh, maybe two or three in the last, two two or uh well i just got this car last year i got i got a used 2011 prius and 
man i love this car it's so good um if my next car isn't straight to tesla which i hope i'd be able to jump to tesla right now there is some uh difficulties in the uh, charging department we don't the building uh doesn't have any means for that um but yeah I, i'd like to get another prius and maybe a, a newer a newer one in the next if for some reason i can't jump straight to electric only uh i'm just trying to say i love a prius and i think it's the greatest car ever um Shout out to all my Prius friends, all my hybrid friends, all my electric friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, since I got the Prius, I've probably only, I've had it since uh, maybe a year and a year and a half, maybe. And I've, I've, I don't really think I've had more than two or three car washes. I just, I just think there's a, uh, yeah, there's definitely a, uh, a correspondence to uh monetary wealth <laughs> and car washes but yeah just uh if you can just deep clean something um it's gonna make it's gonna make you feel better <laughs> and maybe even metaphorically like deep clean um some trauma you know go talk to a therapist uh or maybe uh, write a poem, or um, or buy someone's coffee for if if say you're in line at a uh, Dunkin' Donuts or Aroma Joe's for my uh, my locals listening to this. Uh, maybe buy the order for the car behind you and just vanish. Be that that mystery. Uh, It'll feel good. It's uh, it's just a good feeling thing. I, I think that's what it all boils down to. Just uh, feeling good and kind of spreading that love, that that happiness, um, that positive vibration. And uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna end it with that. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh. You know, a lot of podcasts, we got the music at the end, music, uh, maybe make a, maybe I make the end of the, this little ending part. Maybe I make this, uh, the timely part. Cause I, I mean, I'd like, I'd like for this type of information to be evergreen. So maybe at the end I do a little, uh, what's going on right now. Um, I can tell you I'm super excited, uh, tomorrow night. We got game one of the Eastern Conference Finals, Boston Celtics versus the Miami Heat. I'm extremely excited to see how those teams match up. But on top of that, we get game seven between the Denver Nuggets and the LA Clippers. I mean, when Denver, when they got, when they got nothing to lose, that's a different team, man human it's a different team human um i'm just i'm really excited for uh tomorrow night in basketball and recently with music i mean hit different that's a great song um drake put out a song that wop is that's huge um i mean and like i said i've i really just kind of dig into the into the past with music. I haven't listened to any new albums really lately besides those singles I just mentioned. Um, you know, I'm waiting for TDE, uh, you know, Ab Soul, it's, that's my favorite artist. And it seems like TDE's getting active. It seems like it might be TDE season. Um, I don't know. I know that if an Ab Soul or a Kendrick project drops, that's like, that's you know come on you already know but yeah i haven't listened to the big sean project or even the nas projects um not ashamed to admit but you know i just haven't gotten it yet i haven't 
haven't gotten to it or gotten it, um, I definitely want to listen to both of those projects. Uh, you know, it's cool seeing Dom Kennedy at the end of the uh, Big Sean project. You know, we rock with Dom heavy over here, independent, other people's money, OPM activities, you know what I mean? Um, definitely get to listen into that soon. I don't even know if I've heard a uh, any tracks from it, to be honest. And the Nas record, you know, I've heard the tracks that uh, have been played on, like, the Joe Bunnett podcast, but I haven't, like, heard the album or anything specifically. But I heard that line, uh, was it cherries and alkaline water? I, yeah, come on. Lemongrass, all that good stuff. You, if you guys are uh, into kombucha, you got to... This is, you got to get on that unity flavor. It's the summer flavor. Uh, it's disappearing if you're listening to this in real time. Uh, if you see it, buy it because it won't be around till next summer. But that's that cherry, that lemongrass, that coconut kombucha. It's, it's my favorite flavor. It just tastes so good. Um, just be on the lookout for that and just know that it's uh, it's going away if uh, if you're listening to this in real time currently summertime you know it's the end of summer i think summer ends on the 21st of september every year or that's the first day of fall or i, j I just know the 21st is a uh, a crucial number in uh september as far as seasonal transitions go um yeah be on the lookout for that that uh that flavor of kombucha, it just reminded me of that, the Nas line that I've been, I've seen Absol tweet something about that. You know, they talk about it on the Joe Budden podcast, um, that cherry and lemongrass. I wonder, and cherry, lemongrass, alkaline water. I wonder if uh, if Nas has had that kombucha. That'd be pretty cool, you know? Um, Cause it's, it's a great, it's a great flavor, great purpose. I don't know, man. I think I'm just I'm rambling at this point, but I hope y'all enjoyed this. Humans, shout out to y'all. I love y'all. Um, I hope y'all have a beautiful day and uh, spread some love, you know. Uh, try to work on that self, that, that inner light, that beautiful positivity that we all have. Just, just access it, you know. If you're going through a dark time, I'm hoping this maybe brought a little bit of light to you. And uh, yeah, it's, that's probably it. I love y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed episode one, the Bobby Keith podcast, baby. Yeah, I love y'all. Peace, peace, peace.